watch hey, the paint. Hey, watch the paint, bud. Watch the paint, my bad. All right, folks, now we're ready to wrench. You need the curvy guy, you need the stubby one. My neighbors live 13 feet that way. Today is the day we make the Ferrari a Ferrari. All right, so what we got here is, well, let's just open it up first. Holy crap. This thing is beautiful. I can't even do this stuff justice. I'm trying to shoot this as best as I can, but this stuff is seriously artwork compared to my crappy shooting. All right, and exhaust sound is so important to me. That's why I've been through numerous setups on all of my cars, but the Ferrari systems are really expensive, so I only want to do this once. So I went with this Klein Inconel system. So this whole system weighs essentially nothing. But beyond that, it's gonna give us that high pitch sound that we want. But the other things to consider when you're picking out an exhaust for your car is what'll help determine the sound, which is header design, and primary length. So these are equal length headers. So they'll give us that really smooth exotic tone that we're after. It's got 100 cell high flow cats. So this will give us even more of a higher pitch frequency. Then the interesting part on this system is that it also has an X pipe before the muffler. So when it's straight through, it's gonna hit the X and go straight out. But when the valves are closed, it's still gonna go through this X pipe here and then into the muffler. I'm super excited to get this thing on because I know it's gonna sound crazy both with the muffler in action and then wide open, but I think it's going to be a complete disaster to get in the car because I've heard that removing the stock exhaust manifolds is very challenging. So luckily I got some friends showing up and uh, they'll be here to uh, maybe help, but also just kind of be around for moral support. All right, so I figured there's only one place to come if I want to get my stock boring car shamed on more than anywhere else. Bro, are you coming What's in up? Here? Are you coming in here hot with the camera rolling? Yeah. Come on, you should be used to this by now. What's up, vlog life? Hey, what's happening, guys? Guess what? We're here to talk to you on Vinny Stock and Fucking Ferrari. I couldn't even hear you coming down the street. I didn't even know you were here until you were right in front of me. All right, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Zach! What? You got your own little shop here. All right, we're not here. We all know the Ferrari's yes, a little boring, but I needed some help shooting some exterior shots before we got into uh, showing you guys how great this car's going to sound. So I came down here to visit Zach, check out his new shop, and he's gonna help me film because I know no one's gonna be more disappointed in how boring the stock Ferrari sounds than Zach. gonna do is just a couple of driving shots so you can hear what this thing sounds like from the outside so we'll do like some chill driving some wide open throttle pulls I can't launch 
it. We all saw the first episode when I brought this thing to DDE. It smoked the clutch, so uh, I'm not going to do that again because I need the clutch to last just a little bit longer. Honestly, for a stock car, it doesn't sound that bad, but it's really tinny. It doesn't sound as like rowdy as it needs to. I, I can't really hear, in the car, all you hear is the induction. You don't really hear the exhaust, so it sounds like it has no exhaust note whatsoever from the inside. It can sound a little throaty. Yeah, and Scotto sounds sick. Like, these cars sound so good with an exhaust because the 3.6 liter V8. Yeah. That's like a quarter of the size of the Jimmy's. V8. Yeah, yeah, but right. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. What is the Jimmy? It's like an 11. Liter. It's 9.4 liters technically. It's like 9.38, 9.39. So it's like almost a third of that engine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in the same configuration. So these things sound crazy with an exhaust. So let's go home and put that on. Guys, I got the absolute stupidest purchase ever. We went to a thrift store, and for 12 bucks, I found what might be the best article of clothing ever. Here it is. Here it is. That's right. We got a pre-stained, really crummy, authentic Ferrari jacket from the thrift store. So this is gonna be my uniform while wearing on this car for good luck. All right, folks, now we're ready to wrench. Bumper on the 360 is actually pretty insane. Look at all this tunneling and ducting here. It's pretty sick. Today's a pretty special day because I thought I was just gonna be stuck with Alex here drinking seltzer, watching me work on my car. But we got a big Ferrari guy. Big uh, Ferrari me. guy in the house. Hey, uh, that's, uh, let's not label me that with that. I don't want that sticking. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mike Burrows from Stance Works, and he has done an incredible amount of things for the car community over the past like two decades. But most recently, has an incredible YouTube channel and has built some of the absolute craziest cars. You probably already know this, but if you don't, go check out his channel. Uh, he decided to take the week off this week. Yeah. So he came. Decided to help me work on my Ferrari. Somebody else is working on a Ferrari, let's go. Yeah, all right. I'll damage yours, not mine. Honestly, I'd rather <laughs> you damage it than me. All right, fair I, enough, fair I'm enough. gonna get the seltzer and watch. <laughs> need the curvy guy, you need the stubby one. If you need wow. foldable ones, if you need this weird one with a 90 degree hook on it. Mike asked if he needed to bring anything, and I said, I've heard the headers on this car are impossible to take off. You need like an assortment of 13 mil wrenches. And this man showed up with more 13 mil wrenches than I thought existed. All of them. We've got, if, if we can't get it with these, we even got a crow's foot. So if, if this I, doesn't work, I'm going home. This is, uh, this is how many 13 mil wrenches I have. One. We are very fortunate because this is a 1999, so it doesn't have... Secondary air injection, which means that there's not this air tube that runs across all the primaries. So maybe these will be pretty easy and we'll just finish this thing today and then eat it's pizza. It's gonna go by perfect. No problems at all, no snags. It's gonna be as smooth as butter because we are gonna will it into existence. That's, that's how it's gonna go. I love that. It has to. It has to. I love that. If you had just met Mike, you'd be like, this guy's never worked on a car one day in his life with that attitude. My lord, look at this pile of crap. This thing probably weighs like 50 pounds. Woo, getting that thing out in that tight spot was tough. But we got it out, I got the cap pipes out. I just gotta disconnect that O2 sensor. Now it's just the headers. And then honestly, 
with Mike's array of wrenches, maybe we'll get this thing out pretty quick and slam this thing back together. Be ripping today. Maybe, we'll see. Now we're gonna jump into what I'm expecting to be the hardest part, which is removing the factory exhaust manifolds. No, I think it comes out the top. I think so? Yeah. Okay. It definitely comes out the top. I'm gonna see if you can receive if I can. Um, yeah, let me see if I can receive. Hang on one sec. I like just saw it. I was like, ooh, that looks like it's, uh, it's ready to come out. Hell yeah. All right. So. All right. One out, not too bad. Not too bad. Everything kind of came off relatively simply, so Dude. as long as the other side goes the same. Um, I got two of the bolts out on the bottom. The other two are pretty hard to get to. I think the driver's side bottom is going to be the hardest one, but uh, we're chugging away. I mean, at this point, we're cruising. There's just one bolt, and it is very hard to get to. So I'm gonna climb all the way in and just see if there's a way to get it from in here. So sometimes you gotta get real, real intimate with your car here. This is absolutely horrible. Because I really need to fit two hands in here, uh, but I can't. This is seriously the most impossible bolt to get through. The angle's so tight that once you get the tool on, it just wants to slip off. Ah, God damn it. Ah, wasting too much film. All right, well, Mike's on the phone and I need a second set of hands to hold the tool while I try to break that loose because I just can't get both of my hands into that spot. So we're gonna take a break and I uh, figured there'd be something fun to do if I could actually do it. Let's weigh these parts. So I brought the old household scale out. Okay, first up, the big honker. Forty pounds, five. Can you shut up? Jesus, they have no respect that I'm trying to make a YouTube video here. Forty and a half pounds. Next up, Inconel Klein muffler. Nine point nine pounds. So right there, we have over thirty pound savings. Kind of nuts. Just from the muffler. What was the other one? You said it was that much. Forty pounds. Exhaust manifold. 13 pounds each. These are so light, I don't even think they're gonna register on the scale. 3.8 pounds. OEM catalytic converters. 10.6. The last one's a little weird because the tailpipe section on the muffler uh, is just the two outlets to the tailpipes and then this is actually the entire X-pipe section. So. The Klein might be a bit heavier, but it's also like quadruple the size, but let's see how it works. 8.1 pounds. Okay, so that's 16 pounds for the entire X-pipe and tailpipe section. Almost 60 pounds is absolutely mental. Look at this. The factory exhaust system came in at 103.7 pounds. The Klein Inconel system, 44.1. So we saved 59.6 pounds from switching to an exhaust. That's pretty incredible because, you know, with NA engines, you're not gonna get an unbelievable amount of horsepower out of this. I would say headers and exhaust, what would you predict? Probably like 15, 20? Yeah, I mean, yeah. With the high flow catch, you might see a little bit more, but it ain't gonna be a ton. It's never gonna be a game changer. Yeah, it's not like a modern turbo car where you're gonna see 80 foot pounds of torque, 100 foot pounds of torque, and you know, 100 horsepower, so. That muffler is way up in the car. I mean, it's like perched high in the back. That's high and leveraged way in the back. in the back. So it's gonna, it, you will feel the difference in the car. 60 pounds basically off the bumper of the car. It's pretty good. Let's get this last bolt out and start bolting this new stuff in while it's still daylight because hopefully we can get this in and get this thing fired up before it's too late. My neighbors will hate me, but I really want to hear what it sounds like. They can't be that mad. It sounds sick. <laughs> they can't be that mad. Car guy logic. <laughs> oh my lord, that had to have been one of the most physically painful uh, bolt removals of my life. Uh, just laying on this intake manifold, but uh, we got them all out and now 
I don't know. Now we're gonna figure out how to get him out. You think that one comes out the bottom or top? Uh, I don't know. We're gonna try I think to this one top. looks like top. Oh, you think so? I don't know. No, it's, it's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming All right. Out, yeah. Nice and easy. All right. Uh, into the pile she goes. Whew. Hell yeah. All right. Dude, yes. Got it. Wasn't the worst, because um, honestly, we got lucky. Like, we were just, the whole time we were doing this, we were talking about how fortunate we are about California cars, because the no rust is great. Once you break the bolts loose, they pretty much spin off, but they were just really, really tough to get to. Uh, no room, no visibility. It took just a weird mix and match of tools to get in there and get just the just one bolt the rest of them really not bad at all like yeah simple job but just one of them up buried behind the ac compressor not fun yeah and again we have a 1999 here if you have a 2000 plus there is a whole other thing in the way which makes it a complete disaster so i'm very happy that we don't have all the emission stuff in the 99 it's always a part midway through a project where you just made such a massive mess and you know that you're gonna have to not only finish working on your car but then clean up all this crap this thing went in super quick it's so much smaller than the oem unit i mean when we were taking out the factory header we couldn't even figure out if it went out the top or the bottom because it's so jammed in there so this thing slipped right in i got pretty much all the nuts on right away so uh i think this install is gonna be pretty quick Dude, it's so light. So we got the headers installed. We got the cap pipes installed. And last piece, well, we're gonna put this in and then the muffler, not that, that's not this. Not that. Not this, the muffler. <laughs> He's passed out, doesn't care at all. <laughs> so we'll do that, we'll put the X pipe in, toss the muffler in, pet Chloe some more, and then we're gonna fire this thing up. We are ready. We still got it on there mounted pretty loose uh, because when we put the bumper back on, we're gonna have to make some adjustments, but let's start this thing. Oh, so to note, right now the valves are not hooked up. So the cold start is gonna be valves open. Uh, we could hook them up. Easy, or do we just let it rip? I kinda wanna just let it rip. things running for a couple seconds and the headers have gotten a really nice color already so this thing is incredibly loud but i was looking at the valves and that was cold start with valves open cold start is really aggressive because it has a cat warm-up procedure so it's adding a lot of fuel and it's revving high so it's super super aggressive all right i'm up and i've been impatiently waiting to go start this car up so let's go outside button it up and go for the first drive. Also, I figured out why the valves weren't closing last night and it was because the vacuum lines, although hooked up to the valves, I unplugged them from the vacuum canister to get the fender liners out.
Honestly, not that bad. So that's with the valves closed, and it's it's loud, but it's not it's not too bad. So I'm pretty stoked on that. It's still kind of on cold start sequence, so we're gonna go uh, drive it around and see how it sounds. And I already burnt my finger really bad. Ah! First little cruise around town. It's a little like rattle. I think something, a bracket or something is loose right now. So there's a bit of an annoying noise that we gotta go back and address, but that's why we didn't put the bumper back on yet. But warm idle. It's like nice, it's like a sport exhaust. And now the thing I hate about the valve actuation on the factory exhaust is there's no way to turn it definitively on or off. So I think we gotta let the oil warm up, but once, I believe the way the valves work on this car is above 4,000 RPM or like wide open throttle, the valves will open. Now the problem with that is when you have such a big difference in sound being going from a muffler to a straight pipe section is it's gonna create this big pop. It's gonna have this, this moment where it goes from quiet to obnoxiously loud and I really hate that. So I actually reached out to Klein and they said they had a, um, a valve controller for this car so I ordered that. It should be here in the next day or two actually. So that'll be great because then I could keep it dead quiet when I wanna cruise around town or on the freeway, and then when I want to be a jerk, just flip them open and let it eat. All right, guys, uh, we're gonna go just unplug these valves to see what this thing sounds like, because we need a little taste of it. Well, that's a hell of a lot cooler. Oh boy, that's sick. I haven't even gotten out of first gear and it's awesome. Oh God, it's so sick. Oh my Lord, yes. Like I would just drive this with the valves open always. This isn't loud at all. It's a little loud once you get on the pipe, but I'm at 3,000 RPM right now, this is quiet. I honestly think the only reason why I'll want valves is just for cold start. I want the valve actuation for that, but otherwise, I think I'll just leave them open forever. Oh my God. Oh my Lord, it sounds so sick. I can't rip on it yet, because this thing takes forever to warm up, but this is awesome. This changed the car in every, it's. This car was not a Ferrari before. Now it's a Ferrari. Okay, first drive, unbelievable. Man, this is so good. I'm so excited. All right, bright and early, decided that if we're gonna do some exhaust sound videos, we should come up, drive some mountains. So we're waiting on some friends to show up and then we're gonna go drive up some of the best roads here in SoCal. It's automatic, so it's just, a... it's like you use your finger to shift. Well, For resistance, this looks like carbon fiber wrap, but it's a grill. I'm so happy that not only are you here, but you're still just as disrespectful as you were back in the day. Lewis, what year is your car? 98. Mine's a 99. Look at the taillights. It's right? a car. It's a Corvette. It's a Corvette. It's a Malibu. It's a Corvette. <laughs>
on the mountains and give a kind of before I start modding experience of what this car is like. And my first impression is that it feels a little uncertain on uh, at speed. And we're not pushing it. We're not idiots uh, like these people who tried to pass us on a double yellow and almost hit an oncoming car. The worst. If you're like that, stay home. You're not cool. You're an idiot. You don't deserve to enjoy these roads. <laughs> two feet in. I've never driven a Ferrari. Oh really? I like it. It's weird, right? I like it. the first time I drove it I was like man this thing's sick and then I was like what is a Ferrari why would it not be sick this is just all genuine like it's so f***ing cool it just feels special NSX NSX but like driving a sewing machine <laughs> see I said it I compared this car when I got it I compared it to the NSX and I knew people would hate that but they have similar philosophies it's I mean this is behind you it's all about driving you don't see the hood low weight like driver's car but this does it better We got caught in some rain, so the mountain day is over. But man, I love this thing. It is so much fun. And I'm stoked that Alex got to enjoy it too. Which has provoked a really interesting conversation because Alex used to be an automotive journalist. So he's driven a ton of cars and so have I. And not many of them or any of them have made us giggle like this car has. And that says a lot because this thing is special. It's not the best example of a Ferrari 360, but it doesn't matter because mechanically it's really sound. And adding an exhaust to this car has made it tremendously more fun. Like the stock exhaust doesn't do this car justice. I've got a ton of parts coming in for this car. I actually just ordered the manual transmission swap. It should be here in a couple of weeks. Once that shows up, I'm gonna try to throw it in as soon as possible because I need to experience this car as a gated manual. But this thing's gonna be going through a lot of transformation. So I hope you guys stick around. I can't wait to dig into this thing and make it exactly what I want. So thanks to everyone for the support. I appreciate you guys watching. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. We're gonna keep doing videos every Thursday. So make sure to tune in, but for now I'm out. Oh, <laughs>